What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo and it is time for the Week 4 battle, the Eterna City Enders versus the Bayern Munich, who of course are coached by Shadi. Yeah, if you haven't seen the team analysis for this week, make sure you check it out. It'll be in the same playlist as this video. And um, pardon my interruption up front, I am quite sick, but I definitely wanted to get this up in time for you guys this week. Now, when I saw the team preview for this matchup, uh, he brought basically what I expected him to bring. I really didn't expect Skun Tank. Uh, and when I saw Shaman, I had a good idea that it was Scarfed. Um, and so I feel like I really did bring the right Pokemon to this matchup. Um, on the downside though, me playing when I'm sick, not the best idea. Uh, and it was quite late when we battled, but I was very happy to finally get to battle him as well. Now for this matchup in particular, I wanted to start off with Mega Law Putty. I decided against bringing Focus, uh, excuse me, Fake Out on it. And so I thought if he started out with Registeel or something like that to get up his rocks, I could easily uh, get the Mega Evolution off. Unfortunately, he starts off with his Aerodactyl, which means I am forced to switch out. Um, and that means that he's going to get a free Mega Evolution up while I get off into Cofagrigus here. Uh, Mega Aerodactyl can learn Crunch. But after the Tough Claws boost is taken away, he will not be able to uh, two hit or three hit KO Cofagrigus. Uh, and Aerial Ace isn't even close, of course. Um, it is odd how quickly the HP goes down, even when it doesn't do that much damage. Anyways though, uh, I expected him to switch out here. Since I decided against bringing Toxic Spikes this week, I wanted to spread some burns around his team. And anything that he had coming in, I just wanted to burn it, no matter what. And so Shaman comes in, and I was like, great, if I can burn this thing, I know it has natural cure, but if I can whittle its HP down, that means that my Scarf, Toxicroak, would be able to be in range of a Sucker Punch later on for its KO. Because I figured his Shaman was probably Scarfed, uh, just looking at his team arrangement, he didn't have anything that blistering fast besides Aerodactyl, and he also didn't bring Jolteon, which I was surprised by. Uh, especially since I didn't have any ground types really. But um, Forges is my dedicated switch into Shaman, even with the special offense drops, I can take a couple hits. Um, unfortunately, he gets a crit here, which comes into huge play later on. Um, I really needed Forges to check Manaphy even after a Tail Glow boost. Uh, with max HP and max defense, Manaphy with a Tail Glow boost and Scald still barely does about 60%, 65%. But here I expect a Skun Tank, or I I didn't, actually didn't expect Skun Tank specifically, but I did expect him to switch, um, since he didn't get the special defense drop. And so I switched two, and I went out into my Toxic Rook, not expecting the Aerodactyl to come in, I decided to go for a Rock Tomb, just to scare him. He doesn't know that my Toxic Rook is Scarfed, but with the minus speed, he knows that I outspeed him for sure, but he doesn't know that I'm Scarfed at this point. Uh, I decided to switch out into my Tyranitar, expecting him to switch out as well. And um, I not only wanted to use the opportunity to get my Sandstorm going to help whittle some things down, but I also wanted to use the opportunity to set up my Stealth Rocks. Uh, he goes out into Manaphy. I didn't think he would try setting up against Tyranitar, and so I can get up my Rocks for free. If he does go for Scald or something, since this is Fatalis, it's not going to do that much damage, as you guys have previously witnessed with Tyranitar taking a Focus Blast. Um, and Skull does not do that much damage, and I don't get the burn miraculously. I think almost every single time in these leagues when I get Skull to use against me, I get burned. That's got to be the first time that I did not get burned. Quite, quite happy to see that. Um, free Stealth Rocks, basically. And here I was like, should I switch out or should I just attack him? Because I was afraid of him using Tail Glow as I switched out. Uh, and so I just decided to go into floor just here to maybe get some wish passes around. He decides to set up the tail glow right now, which sucks. I really was hoping he would continue attacking with Scald. Um, at the and, and of course there is the ever present threat of me switching in Toxic Croak on a Scald and him not doing anything. Um, but now that he has his free tail glow up, I admit that I play very poorly the next couple of turns. Uh, I don't know if that's attributed to me being sick. It being very late for me and I had worked 10 hours that same day. I don't know, but I played really poorly. So the plus three Scald with the combination of that crit Seed Flare earlier is going to be enough to take out Florges here uh, after the Sandstorm damage, which is really unfortunate. I, I completely overestimated Florges' ability to take a plus three Scald from that range. Uh, and granted, I did live it, but I thought I could live it a lot better than that, that the Sandstorm wouldn't be a problem. And of course, Manaphy has leftovers to offset the Sandstorm damage, so that didn't work out either. Uh, Kofagrigus 
I, I'm just going to assume that I calced some stuff wrong. I put enough special defense into Cofagrigus to live a plus three Scald, and I didn't live it at all, and it just kind of blows him away. So I don't know what happened there. I threw away Cofagrigus, and now I don't have a check for Mega Aerodactyl, really. Uh, so now that I threw away Cofagrigus and Florida's, it's time to go back on the offensive. I reveal my Scarf here and do a pitiable amount of damage with Drain Punch. And of course he has Psychic. Why would you not bring Psychic when you know I have a Toxic Croak on my team? Uh, and Toxic Croak goes down, but that's okay because since I did get the damage off, I can bring in uh, Stoutland and KO Manaphy easily from this point with the Choice Bandit return. Um, another option I had was to go into my um, Law Punny and just um, hope that he wasn't running max speed. But I was really worried that he was running max speed, even though he was, even though he had leftovers. Uh, but then again, based on the damage Drain Punch did, he definitely had some bulk invested. Um, it's kind of hard to say. I really wanted to go for Superpower right there. Superpower had a small itty bitty chance to KO from that uh, range of HP, but I was doing so poorly at this point that I didn't want to risk it. Uh, I actually traded away my <laughs> Limber Law Punny before this battle happened. So I didn't want to go into Law Punny because it did not have the Limber ability and it would get paralyzed. And I knew he was going to use Thunder Wave, so I'm forced to go out into Tyranitar here. And um, it sucks because now Tyranitar can get flinched, parahaxed into Oblivion. Um, I just went straight for Earthquake trying to hit the Registill that I expected to either set up rocks or just start attacking with Iron Heads. Um, it would have been a lot nicer if I had gone for a Crunch there because Crunch would have been a 2 KO on Shaman. But that's okay. I'm gonna go on in the law punny now, basically as death fodder, because I did not get the mega, did not have the opportunity to mega evolve earlier, and I don't have fake out. I don't have a substitute up. There's nothing I can do against it um, at this point. And then it just basically comes down to Tyranitar and Sandrush, uh, Stoutland to at least bring back the differential. At this point, I hadn't knocked out any of Shadi's Pokemon, uh, and I was feeling really crappy about the way I had played in the battle so far. It, was, it just didn't make any sense for me to sacrifice um, Cofagrigus the way I did. And then also to completely overestimate Floor just in the way that I did too. Um, it would have made a lot more sense to kind of just go straight into Law Punny back when I went into Stoutland and then try to make a wall right there. But anyways, all that aside, I'm just going to hope that I can live a Seed Flare, which I should be able to, and then put on some good damage with Crunch. Um, Seed Flare does less than I expected it to, but I get paralyzed, um, so I'm not even able to knock out the Shaman here, which is unfortunate, really. I'm pretty sure a Crunch plus Sandstorm would have KO'd it from that range, based on how much I Earthquake did earlier. Um, he's doing pretty well not missing any of these Seed Flares, too. I'm finding that very impressive. Uh, I tend to miss Seed Flares, but I didn't miss Rock Tomb earlier. I was pretty happy about that. I was very wary of putting it on Toxicroak with that 95% accuracy rating that it has. I miss that move in game very often when I'm playing through the Pokemon campaign, and I don't get an opportunity to use it very much in competitive battles. So, here I really wanted to click Superpower, but then I would have been at the mercy of all of his other Pokemon. Um, I was just hoping for another crit or something. I needed to knock out something here. I didn't want to get 6 0'd. It was a moral victory that I was looking for at that point. Uh, he does go, <laughs> he paralyzes my Stoutland, which now I'm locked into a return and I can't outspeed anything on his team anymore. And here we go with the Iron Head flinchiness alongside the Paralysis, oh boy. So this happens for quite a while and eventually um, I do break through. It takes, I think, three or four turns for me to break through the Paralysis and flinching and all that good stuff. Uh, but I am able to get the Moral Victory. So do you like Waffles? Yes, I do like Waffles. Thank you so much for breaking through the Paralysis and the hacks there at the end to get me the Moral Victory. Otherwise, I would just feel even worse about this battle. Um, but that's okay. Well, we did lose this week pretty pretty badly. It's like I, I win one close, and then I lose really badly. I win another one close, and then I lose really badly. So since I lost this one really badly, we have to go into next week with a strong game plan for week five. So stay tuned next week for the week five battle and that matchup. Um, I believe in week five, we're actually going to be going up against... Uh, the Pittsburgh Pyroar, um, and the Pittsburgh Pyroar are coached by the Slyroar. So um, that'll be pretty interesting. He has a pretty phenomenal team too. So our work is definitely cut out for us. I hope you guys enjoyed this upload. I hope I'm feeling better by the next time I upload, and I will talk to you guys next time. Later now. <laughs>